Over August the 11th, shellings by the Russian military killed seven civilians and injured 14, reported Pavlo Kirilenko, the head of the Donetsk Regional Military Administration. According to the Donetsk Regional Police, the Russian troops shelled the region's municipalities 37 times within 24 hours. Residential blocks and Avdivka caulking plant came under fire. The Russians launched missiles, including S-300 anti-aircraft missiles, rockets from Grad and Uragan Emalres, artillery and tank shells. 54 facilities were damaged or destroyed, including 39 residential houses, buildings of the caulking plant, a railway station, administrative premises and garages, the report says. Overnight on August the 12th, the Russian forces carried out 11 missile strikes on Kramatorsk. No casualties have been reported, said Oleksandr Honcharenko, the head of Kramatorsk City Military Administration. The morning in Kramatorsk began at 2 a.m. 11 missile strikes on the city. Some detached houses were ruined. No information on victims has been received, he wrote. It was night. I was asleep. It blasted and I woke up. It stopped blasting. I went out to look around in the morning. So much destruction. Here we are. Spare parts. It's a part of a missile. We bring everything here. We'll see it as metal scrap. They say color metal is pricey. I'm a master of sports in mountaineering and jokes help in nasty weather when we are cold or hungry. So my humor is professional. I worked as a rescuer for three years. We heard it even from here. It hit over there, where the 20th numbers are, and fragments reached even the 10th numbers. We came to help. At night, at 3.45 a.m., we came to have a look, and when the curfew ended, we came to help. Everybody's alive, thank God. According to Energoatom, the national nuclear energy regulation company, the Russian military keeps shelling the Zaporizhia NPP. On August the 11th, the Russians targeted the nuclear power plant's grounds four times and hit very close to the first energy unit. They damaged the pumping station of utility wastewater. A large-scale smoke formation is seen around. The situation is exacerbating as sources of radiation are very close, and a few radiation sensors are damaged. Energo Atom reports. What is currently going on around the Zaporizhia NPP is one of the biggest crimes of the terrorist state. Today, more Russian shells hit the territory of the plant very close to the NPP's facilities. One more time, Russia hit the bottom in the global history of terrorism. No one else has overused a nuclear plant so obviously to threaten the whole world and bring forward some conditions. Absolutely everyone in the world should react immediately to put the invaders out of the Zaporizhia NPP grounds. This is a global interest and not just a need of Ukraine. On the night of August the 12th, Russians shell struck one of the higher education facilities in Kharkiv's Slobitsky district. It is estimated that no one was killed or wounded, reports Kharkiv Regional Prosecutor's Office. As it reports, at around 2.52 a.m., the Russian army inflicted a missile strike on Slobitsky district. Due to the shelling, buildings of a higher education institution were destroyed and badly damaged. According to preliminary information, S-300 missiles were launched from Russia's Belgorod region. The prosecutor's office says there are no military facilities on the territory of the institution. The law enforcement bodies are investigating the violation of laws and customs of war. According to Oleg Sinehubov, the head of the Kharkiv Regional Military Administration, the education institution was hit by two missiles. A canteen and vegetable storages were damaged. Viktor Kovalenko, the head of Zolochev Hromada, reported that on August the 12th, a 50-year-old woman died because of Russian shelling of the village of Baranivka, Zolochev Hromada, Kharkiv region. A 29-year-old man was injured. He was hospitalized. According to Kovalenko, outbuildings were destroyed. The house was damaged. Valentin Reznichenko, the head of the Dnipropetrovsk Regional Military Administration, announced that on the night of August the 12th, the Russian army shelled Nikopolsky and Krivorysky districts of Dnipropetrovsk region with BM-21 Grad, BM-27 Uragan and Barrel Artillery. Marhanets, Nikopol and Zelenodolsk Hromada came under fire. Up to 40 rockets hit Marhanets. Three people were wounded, two of them are in the hospital. A 12-year-old boy is among those hospitalized. Valentin Reznichenko 
Konichenko wrote. In the city, four high-rise buildings and several private houses were damaged. The shelling hit a local factory, a printing house, a shop and a cafe. In Nikopol, four private houses and cars were damaged. Previously, there are no wounded. There is destruction of housing in Zelenodolsk Gromada. People are unharmed. During the day of August the 11th, rescuers registered 12 fires on the territory of Mykolaiv region. The main department of the State Emergency Service in Mykolaiv region reported that four of them occurred as a result of being hit by Russian munitions and fragments from them. According to emergency workers, the roof of a residential building in Korobelny district of Mykolaiv caught fire due to shelling in the morning of August the 11th. Rescuers received information about the fire at 8.19 a.m. The fire was extinguished at 8.48 on an area of 40 square meters. There are no casualties or injuries. Also, during the day, Russian troops shelled Balabaniv and Halitsyny forests three times. The total area of destroyed forests is 20 hectares. During the day of August the 11th, six Gromadas of Sumer region were shelled from the territory of Russia. They were fired from mortars and artillery. In Bilopilla, two residential buildings were damaged by shelling. A wet field also burned. This was reported in the military administration. In Nova Sloboda Gromada of Sumer region, a wet field belonging to a private enterprise burned down due to shelling. The largest is a remnant. It is an engine for S-300 missile. This is the remnant of the engine which the suppers removed after the shelling. With such missiles, the Russians have been hit in Kharkiv almost every night for the third month. They are intended for air defense and the Russians hit the city with them. Igor Ovcharuk, the head of the humanitarian demanding unit, says. They hit with everything. BM-21 Gret, BM-27 Uragan, BM-30 Smerch, S-300 engines. There were also two S-4 Tulpan and two S-7 Pion. In March we had up to 150 hits per day during daylight hours. All parts of the projectiles are taken from the sites of shelling after the investigators determine their number and inspect the places of hits. Suppers call them safe metal remains, that is, those that will no longer explode. Here is the base from the main body where the Tornado F cluster elements were placed. This is the remnant of a 203 mm high explosive fragmentation projectile. It is probably cheaper for them to just shoot like that, so as not to dispose of it, because disposal and repacking of ammunition is also very expensive. It's cheaper to release, let it fly, and then you don't have to spend money on their maintenance. This is somewhere probably a fifth of what was here. The main mass has already been taken to the site for investigation. Already there, every part becomes evidence in the case, Dmitro Soima, deputy head of the investigation department, says. Investigators recorded more than 5,200 incidents of shelling of infrastructure facilities in the city of Kharkiv. Criminal proceedings have been initiated for each case according to Article 438 of the Criminal Code of Ukraine. This is a violation of the customs of warfare. The police hand over these materials to the security service of Ukraine. They also keep the remains of the projectiles themselves. All this evidence of Russian war crimes.